So here's a typical exam question on sampling. The signal xt, which has this form, is sampled at six samples per second by multiplying it by this train of impulse functions to give yt, so standard sampling setup. Assume that yt is then passed through an ideal low-pass reconstruction filter to give zt. Assume the low-pass filter has amplitude scaling such that zt has the same power as xt. So that tells you you don't need to worry too much about the scaling in this question. Write an expression for zt. So let's think about what's going on here. We've got a signal xt sampled and then reconstructed. So it's probably going to be a question about aliasing. So let's think about what happens to xt when it gets sampled. Well, we have xt equals e to the, uh, we can write that function here as uh, 1 divided by 2j e to the, six, to, to the j 16 pi t minus e to the minus j 16 pi t. This is just a standard expression. We're going to be thinking about aliasing, so we're thinking about the frequency domain. So what's the Fourier transform of this? Well, we know that the Fourier transform of, uh, this is a constant times e to the j, which is a complex number. So this is the phase with a constant out the front. So we know that a Fourier transform of a constant is 2 pi times delta. And we know that the Fourier transform of e to the j omega t is 2 pi times a shifted delta. And you'll probably get expressions given to you in exam formula table sheets. But we can write this, uh, we can see that we can write this as uh, we can take the j, uh, multiply top and bottom by j squared, so you get minus uh, j um, out the front, so out of the front of this one, minus j, and then a pi because of the, um, uh, sorry, this gives a Fourier transform, uh, I'll write the Fourier transform here, minus j pi of delta omega minus 16 pi uh, plus j of pi times delta omega plus 16 pi. So this is the Fourier transform of xt. And we know the property that if you multiply in the time domain, you convolve in the frequency domain. So something you could do now is you could work out the Fourier transform of p and t, and then you could convolve it with this expression here, and you could do all that mathematically. One of the reasons that this is a typical exam question is that lecturers like to know if you understand what's going on, not just that you're able to do a whole lot of mathematics. So let's think about this for a minute just before we head into doing all of that mathematics. So let's think to ourselves what we know about sampling. Well, what happens with sampling is you get copies of your Fourier transform centered at the sampling frequency. So that is, that is what you find by doing all the mathematics, but that's something that's an important property to know about sampling. And we can use that property to answer this question more quickly. So let's plot the Fourier transform here. This is the Fourier transform of x. It has a delta function at 16 pi, and I'm just going to put a negative above to remind ourselves it's got a negative j, because uh, we're only plotting amplitude and we'd like to just keep track of the phase. And there's a, Fourier, a delta function at minus 16 pi with a positive j. And as we said, we get copies, when we do the sampling, we get copies of this appearing at the sampling frequencies and the repeated copies. That's so a property of Fourier transform. We're going to use that property now in answering the next step of this question. So let's see what we get when we get those properties. So first of all, you, when you do the sampling, you're going to get the original signal back. Okay, so the, or not the original signal back, you're going to have the original signal appearing. So here's the original signal. This is the delta functions at 16 and minus 16. And as we said, we're going to get copies now appearing centered at the sampling frequency. So what was the sampling frequency? Six samples per second. So that is six samples per second and 2 pi f. So 2 pi times 6 equals 12 pi. Okay, so we're going to have copies centered at 12 pi. So where is that here? This is 12 pi. So now we get this, this here centered at 12 pi. So what does that give us? We're just ignoring the amplitudes for the moment because as it said, we're going to have a filter that accounts for those. So at 12 pi, 
we're going to have this zero shifted to 12 pi. So where are these two going to appear for this one? So for this copy, so you've got 12 pi minus 16, so that's minus 4. There's going to be a delta function at minus 4 pi, which is going to have a positive uh, across the, uh, out at the top of it. Okay, just to remind ourselves that that's a positive j. So then 12 pi plus the 16 uh, gives us uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, gives us 28 pi up here. And so this is going to have a negative above it. Okay, and so we also get a copy at minus 12 pi. So that is going to have, uh, we're going to go center this at minus 12 pi, which means this one here goes to 4 pi with a negative above it. And this one goes to minus 28 uh, with a positive above it. That's where that one went to for the minus 12 pi. Of course, there's also copies at twice that frequency. So at 24 pi, there is a copy. And at 24 pi, we're going to center the x at 24. So we now go 16 down from 24. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. That's to 8 pi where there's going to be this, this delta function here appearing with a positive, because that's the one centered at 24 pi, which is twice that frequency there. Uh, and then another one off the scale, which I'm not uh, drawing here. And so minus 24 pi gives us a spike at, at minus 8 pi with a negative, because that's when this is centered at minus 24. You get this one appearing at minus 8, and so on. Uh, so this is what you get. I haven't drawn all of them in, but there will be another one at... 20 pi, uh, which will have a positive. You can see the pattern here, and also one at minus 20 pi. Uh, you can see the pattern. Okay, so this is what we've got knowing about our knowledge of sampling, where sampling causes copies of the Fourier transform to appear at the sample, centered at the sampling frequency. That's what we've got here. So this is what our sampled signal is going to look like, what yt. This is the Fourier transform of yt. And now we're told that to put it through an ideal reconstruction, low-pass filter reconstruction. So this thing here, we're going to multiply now because putting it through a filter in the time domain means multiplying in the frequency domain. So we're multiplying by our low-pass filter. And what's the cutoff frequency of our low-pass filter? Well, it's going to be the cutoff frequency is because it's an ideal low-pass filter for our six samples per second. Therefore, the cutoff is going to be at three hertz, and 3 hertz gives us, so this is a cutoff at 3 hertz, uh, the 3 hertz cutoff for ideal for that sampling rate according to Nyquist, so we're using our knowledge of Nyquist, uh, gives us 6 pi. So multiplying in the frequency domain, the only components that are within that band limit width here are the minus 4 pi and the 4 pi component. So this is the what we've got here with a negative, and this one here with a positive. All the rest are multiplied by 0 from our low-pass filter reconstruction. So this is what's left, and we can clearly see here that this is a exactly the same as what we had before, uh, at, which was centered at 16, which was at 16 pi, but now it's at 4 pi. Also, the phase is negative on the right-hand side and positive on the left. So this means that zt equals sine of 4 pi t. So this is your answer, sine of 4 pi t. And it said about the amplitude that the low-pass filter had a gain, which meant that the power of the output signal was the same, uh, zt was the same as the power of xt, so there's no scaling out the front. So here we've used our knowledge of sampling uh, that the copies repeat at, centered at the sampling frequency and multiples of them to simply answer this by knowing about the properties in the Fourier transform domain and being able to draw it graphically to find the solution, rather than working through a mass of mathematics of doing a convolution mathematically between our function and the sampling function. So, so it's, a, it's really testing your understanding of sampling, which is a reason why it's a typical exam question. So if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Subscribe to the channel for lots more videos. And check out the webpage in the description below where you can find a full list of all the videos on the channel in topic order.